If I touch the waters of La Spendola, I am aware of that of which the water is made. If I hold a stone in my hand, I have an understanding of it that reaches down into its very molecules, its atoms. This is how Giuseppe Dessi describes the profound sense of belonging that he shared with Villa Cidro and its vicinity. In fact, it is this author who offers Villa Cidro its most important guidebook, the novel Paese d'Ombre, Town of Shadows. It is not difficult to be directed by its pages and to discover how the piazzas, streets and churches in the town to this day tell of ancient impressions, evoking the emotions found in the author's work. In the heart of the old town centre stands the lavatoio, wash house, the symbol of Villa Cidro. A large canopy built in Art Nouveau style, held up by six cast iron columns decorated with doodles and pine cones, a dozen or so tubs with faucets, waste pipes and water tanks that look like those of a drinking trough. Not far from the wash house stands Piazza Zampillo. It was simply the piazza to play in, and it belonged to every child in town. Buildings of historical relevance overlooked the square, such as the Monte Granatico, an institution of a Sardinia under the Savoy dynasty, where wheat, the single most essential source of survival, was kept and protected in case of floods. Soon the water reached Piazza Cadoni and was rising to the intermediate story of the Monte Granatico warehouse, in which the wheat was stored. Had the water flooded into the warehouse, the damage would have been enormous. Casa Cadoni and Ponte Ferraris both overlook the piazza. The Santa Barbara Parish Church and its medieval-style square are only a few metres away. Ponte Ferraris was the bridge built in order to enable town dwellers to cross over the Rio Fluminera River that still flows through the town, even though it is now covered. Leaving Piazza Zampillo, continuing along the suggestive Via Tuveri, with its ancient cobblestones, the Castanjas district appears, located at the foot of Monte Cucuredu. The oldest part of the town, small stone houses and small courtyards bristling with bunches of dried branches, bundles of reeds and long poles. Every home, like a blackened shell, gets its light from small windows and doors opening directly onto the courtyards. Monte Cucuredo and Monte Omo host the century-old Pineta del Carmine pine grove that overlooks the residential centre described in a heartfelt, detailed manner. It would have never crossed anybody's mind to install those street lamps, one every 200 paces, but once installed, they met with everyone's approval. The same thing happened with the wash house and the slaughterhouse, and for the pine grove as well, to such a point that the school children took it upon themselves to water the first pine trees planted around the Carmelo every single day.